Chrissy, where have you vanished to? We've been trying to reach you. Why are you ignoring my calls? It's as if you're deliberately avoiding me. I'm growing increasingly concerned about James. What's his status? How is my son faring? Are you spending enough time with him at the hospital? He needs you. Oh, hi, Serena. How are you? Sorry I wasn't able to answer your calls. I've been very busy at work, so I haven't been able to answer the phone a lot of the time. Regardless of work, you should keep us updated. It's not that difficult to answer or make a call. I apologize. Today was particularly hectic and I couldn't get back to you. Enough with the excuses. It comes off as insincere and lazy. So, how is James? Any improvements? His condition remains stable, neither better nor worse. But he seems to be sleeping a bit more than before, which is a slight improvement. So, he isn't really improving then? Just maintaining the status quo? Well, he started eating a little bit now, which is definitely a positive sign. We should be grateful for that. But that doesn't necessarily mean he's getting better, right? Seems like he's still in the same condition. Yes, overall that's true. All we can do is wait and hope for the best. I haven't lost hope yet. I know he's been fighting this illness for a long time, and it must be exhausting. Wouldn't it be better for him to be cared for at home now that his time is nearing? He insists on fighting till the end and doesn't want to come home to die. I respect his wishes and will stay with him at the hospital as much as I can. I want him to keep fighting, even if it's just one day at a time. It might be selfish of me, but I don't want to lose him. Then why don't you spend more time with him at the hospital? He needs your support now more than ever. You shouldn't just carry on with work while he's battling for his life. I agree with you, and I want to be by his side as much as possible too. But if I don't work, we won't be able to pay our bills. That's our harsh reality. You can be so cold-hearted sometimes. Is it all about money? Surely there are things more important than that. If it were me, I would even go into debt just so I could be at his side during his time of need. Well, James is telling me that I should keep working and making money, so that's what I'm doing. It's as simple as that. He and I are on the same page. And I'm actually headed over to the hospital to see him right after we finish this call, so that'll be good. We can eat dinner together. I am making a point of seeing him every day. It's my one and only mission in life. There's nothing more important to me than this now. Oh, is that so? It's funny that you should say that. It's interesting because, you know, I've been thinking a lot lately. And I wonder if marrying you was what caused James to start having all these health problems that he's now dealing with. It makes sense to me. What? Just what are you trying to say to me, Serena? What are you getting at? What I'm saying is that you've been a jinx for him. A bringer of bad luck. A curse, even. I mean, just look at the big picture. You married him, but haven't given him any children. And then he got sick. And he's been in and out of the hospital ever since you two got together. And now he's bedridden, and we don't know what's coming next. It certainly doesn't look good, that's for sure. The chain of events is pretty clear to me. He was always happy, went to good schools, and had a good job. Then it all turned into a nightmare in the blink of an eye when he married you, Chrissy. All the money we spent on tutors, extracurricular activities, and the rest of his education has also gone to waste. What a shame. Please, for James' sake, don't say such things. None of this was caused by him. He has always done right by both you and me. Oh, I'm not blaming James for any of this. None of it is his fault. Not at all. But his judgment about you has definitely been poor. Because no matter how hard I try to see it from his perspective, I'm just amazed that he let himself get involved with a low-class woman like you. He should have split up with you right away. But, of course, he wouldn't listen to our advice on the subject, as usual. That's how he's always been. Hard-headed and stubborn. My brilliant son only became like this after marrying you. A single mother with only a high school education and nothing to offer him. Serena, please. Save this for some other time. Now isn't really the time for all this, is it? Oh, isn't it? Then when is a good time for me to say it to you? I've held my tongue for too long now. I can't keep quiet about it any longer. So here it is. I've never liked you. And it's always been obvious to me that you are bad for my son in every way. I see no redeeming qualities in you. But James has always been your ally and supporter and has defended you. But then he got sick and couldn't take care of you anymore. That's why I'm saying all of this to you now. The time has come. 
Serena, I am sorry I haven't been the daughter-in-law that you wanted me to be. I really am. However, I fully intend to be the best wife and caregiver to him that I can be and to take better care of him than anyone else can. Like I said, it's my one and only mission in life now. So I will continue to love and support him with my full effort and devotion, just as I have been doing throughout this whole ordeal. You can count on that. You'd better. It'll be a real problem for everyone if you dump him now, after he's gotten sick and can't do anything useful. That would be a disaster for everyone involved. After all, who would look after him then? Us? We certainly couldn't take care of him the way that he needs to be cared for now. Look, just do what you're supposed to do as his wife and then leave us alone, okay? Don't forget that he's counting on you and so are we. Just give us regular updates on his condition and let us know if anything changes. It's your responsibility. It's all on you. Okay, I understand and we'll keep taking care of him as I have been. Um, by the way, are you and Maverick not going to visit him in the hospital? At all? You still haven't been to see him and he's wondering why. About that. No, we won't be going yet and that's because we're old and we need to be careful not to get sick. Who knows what kind of germs we might catch if we go and hang around a place with that many sick people in it? That's just asking for a case of the flu, COVID, or who knows what. Plus, if we got sick, that would just be one more thing for James to worry about, wouldn't it? That won't do. Not at all. It's best not to take that risk. So no, we won't be visiting him at the hospital. Out of an abundance of caution. That's actually another good reason to bring him home, by the way. Oh, I see. I guess that makes sense. It'll be hard to explain to him, though. But we're obviously thinking of him all the time. I mean, always. Always sending our thoughts and prayers. And it's precisely because we can't go visit him that we're in touch with you like this, too. Your role in all this is crucial now. So you better be sure to tell him that we're thinking of him, okay? Don't forget. Of course. I don't mind doing that for you and for him, but... You know... James is still able to use his phone. So wouldn't it be better if you and Maverick called him and told him that yourselves? I'm sure he'd love to hear from you. It would make his day. No thank you. Talking to our child whose life is hanging by a thread? I just can't. That's too much for us to handle. Too much for us to bear. We're too old and fragile for that. I'm afraid it might cause Maverick to have a panic attack or worse. Can you please think a little more of how that would make us feel? Try to see it from our perspective for a change. This is why inconsiderate people are such a problem. They never think about others' feelings. I mean, good grief. Oh, okay. Well, I apologize then. Oh, we're almost at the bus stop for the hospital. I have to go now. Have a good night, Serena. You'd better take good care of our boy. He's the only son we've got. That's pretty much all that you're good for. So don't screw it up. Serena, can we talk for a moment? What is it, Chrissy? I'm just about to indulge in a relaxing bath. It's about James. His condition has taken a turn for the worse. The doctor suggested we start preparing for the worst. I think we should heed his advice. What? What happened? His condition has suddenly deteriorated. They managed to stabilize him this time, but they warned that next time could be more serious and he might not pull through. Why are we hearing about this just now? Too busy to call us again? I thought we agreed you'd keep us updated. I did call. I left a message. Didn't you check it? Please check your missed calls. I kept my promise. Oh, you did call. I apologize. We were out and I missed your call. So when are you planning to visit your son? He needs your support now more than ever. He's been asking about you. Let me think. But he's stable now, right? Yes, he's stable for now, but last night was tough. We don't know what the future holds. His condition is precarious. I strongly suggest that you and Maverick visit him as soon as possible. It would mean the world to him. All right. We'll definitely come if his condition worsens. Just keep us posted. So you're not visiting him today? Seriously? Not today. You'll let us know if anything changes, right? But if we wait until then, he might pass away without seeing you. If it's meant to be, it will be. Let's hope it doesn't come to that. He has you by his side, right? That's what matters most. Tell him we'll visit soon. That should comfort him. Okay, I'll tell him, but... 
Good. Now, if you'll excuse me, my bath awaits. Keep us informed if there are any updates. Chrissy, come back here! Where do you think you're going? We're not done talking yet. What do you think you're doing? Running away in the middle of this conversation like that? I have nothing more to say to you. The conversation is over! Oh no, you're not getting away that easily. You really are going to be the disrespectful daughter-in-law all the way until the end of this, aren't you? Are you serious? After the cremation, you actually slapped me in the face, Serena! How did you expect me to react? You went completely insane. That was totally out of hand and uncalled for. You should be ashamed. If the family hadn't intervened immediately, I would have called the police. That's a complete exaggeration. Maverick and I were just noticing how disrespectful and inappropriate you were being. What on earth are you talking about? What did I do? I mean, you were all smiles after the funeral. Smiling ear to ear for all to see. Shameful. And I didn't see you shed a single tear. Not one. You were laughing and talking with all the relatives. Just as happy as you could be. What is wrong with you? Maverick and I saw all of it with our own eyes. Don't try to deny it. That's because I was relieved for your son and my husband. James had been desperately fighting that sickness for such a long time. He was tired and he was in pain all the time. You'd know that if you'd ever visited him at the hospital. And he was finally released from all that pain and suffering. That's what I was thinking about when I was smiling. His being free from pain and suffering is a reason to be happy, not sad. It's too bad that you're unable to see that. Yeah, I'm not buying that. Not for a minute. The truth is that you're happy to get your hands on his inheritance, isn't it? You are well aware that my boy was due to receive a large inheritance from his grandfather, aren't you? That's the real reason that you stayed with him, took care of him, and didn't divorce him. You had your eyes on that inheritance all along. That's a disgraceful accusation! That money had nothing to do with James and I being together. I loved him. Yes, well... The words of an uneducated single mother simply cannot be trusted. They are a shallow and stupid breed of human, as I've said many times before. Serena, you have no cause or right to speak to me this way. You are completely out of line once again. At any rate, we were extremely upset by your behavior. It was just unseemly and unacceptable. And we won't be giving any inheritance to a daughter-in-law who was so happy at our son's passing. And since you say that you don't care about the inheritance, that's okay with you, right? No complaints, right? I mean, you weren't with him because of the inheritance anyway, right? You said so yourself. Of course. By all means, take it all for yourselves. I don't want any of it. Even if there was something that James left behind for me, I couldn't use it anyway. It's all yours. I'm also going to be moving out of our house as soon as possible. What? Moving already? Really? Why? But that house is practically brand new. It's only been a few years since it was built. Yes, that's true. However, I will be moving out soon. Are you saying that you don't want any of your inheritance? None at all? That's correct. I have no need for it anymore. I mean, you have no intention of giving it to me anyway, right? Or might I be able to have just a little of it? If you say that you don't want it, we're certainly not going to give it to you. Why would we do that? You're serious about what you're saying right now, right? Let's be perfectly clear about it and have no backtracking later on. Because if you come back to us later saying that you changed your mind and you do want it after all, we're not going to give it to you. No problem. That's perfectly fine by me. It's all yours. Take it. If you're that concerned about me changing my mind, we can write up an abandonment of inheritance. Shall we do that? Sure, let's do that. That's a very good idea. Okay, then go ahead and put that plan into action as soon as possible. All right. I do have one thing to ask in return, although it's not a precondition or anything like that. Oh, do you? What now? What else do you want? I'm not entertaining any unreasonable requests from you. Keep it within reason. All I want is your promise that you won't bother me anymore ever again after we do this. That's what I want, and I also want to keep James's remains. I will decide on the burial place before the mourning period ends. Is that it? That's everything? Nothing more than that? In that case, we're more than happy to oblige your request. We have no intention of ever getting involved with you again, either. Understood. Fair enough, then. It's settled. Well, then, I will be in touch once I've taken care of the abandonment of inheritance. 
Thank you for everything. Chrissy, you really are a lowlife. Is there nothing that you won't stoop to? Where in the world are you hiding out? Come back to the house right now. Sorry, but that's not possible at this time. I've moved out already and I am in my new place. Yeah, it must be somewhere nearby though. Where is it? If you won't come here, we'll go to you. Where is your new place? Give us the address right now. No, I won't be doing that. You agreed to cut all contact with me, remember? Don't forget our agreement. But you're the one who didn't hold up your end of the bargain. Why is James's inheritance nothing but debt? We're really screwed. This is untenable. Where's all his inheritance money from his grandfather? Where did it all go? Oh, that? I donated all the money to a worthy charity before James passed away. James wanted it that way. What? What are you saying? As you know, James was suffering from an incurable disease. And it seemed that he wanted that money to be used to help others who are suffering from similar afflictions. What are you talking about? You donated all of it? All of it? There was over $200,000 there! Not to mention the mortgage on the house isn't even paid off yet. When we bought the house, we still hadn't gotten any money from his grandpa. And James was still healthy and working back then, so... But usually, that kind of loan is supposed to be paid off when you know that the borrower doesn't have long to live. Why hasn't it been? We were able to pay the mortgage with just my salary, so that's the way that we left it. That's just what I'm saying! That's not how it's supposed to be done! Leaving debt unpaid when you know that money is coming in is just... Why would you do that? And on top of that, he's got unpaid credit card debt as well! All there is is debt! Nothing but debt! What can I say? He was bored in the hospital, so he was doing a lot of therapeutic shopping. It made him happy. You're the wife and you should have been paying for that! Hey, I had already signed off on my abandonment of inheritance, you know? And as for the credit card... James said that he got it back when he was in college, and that Maverick is a guarantor for it. So now you're responsible for that too. Just what in the world are you trying to do to us? Are you saying that James never had any intention of giving us any of his inheritance? Yes. Sorry to say it, but that is pretty much what it looks like to me. And that is also what he wrote in a letter to me, and asked me not to read it until after he was gone. So yes, we can safely assume that he had no intention of giving you anything. And you abandoned your inheritance, knowing about all this beforehand? Of course! After all, it was my husband's final wish, and I intended to honor it. It was my duty to honor it, in fact. What are you saying? I don't understand! Why has he been so cruel to us? We raised him from the time he was a baby! This is horrible! Cruel! That's not the kind of boy I raised! Yeah, I'm pretty sure that he was thinking the same thing about you and Maverick, Serena. I mean, you didn't even go to visit him in the hospital when he was dying! So that's why he left you nothing but debt. What goes around comes around. What? What did he say that we did to him? He told me that you didn't care about him. Always ignored him and made him do only what you wanted him to do. Not what he wanted. And he didn't like the way that you bullied me. His loving wife. Once again, what goes around comes around. So, when James finally got his hands on Grandpa's money, he decided to spend it with joyful abandon. And that's just what he did. And, you know, after he got sick, he told me that he believed that you and Maverick were just waiting for him to die. I think that he probably wanted to get back at you for never even once visiting him while he was in the hospital. I can't really say that I blame him. We were thinking of him and worrying about him in our own way. He should have known that. Were you really? Honestly? After he got sick, didn't you say that raising him had been a waste of time and money? No! That's not true! Well, if you didn't like this inheritance situation, you can always just declare a personal bankruptcy. That's certainly one option. Personal bankruptcy? You must be joking. No thanks! I'd rather we just abandon the inheritance ourselves, too. No, that won't work because you've already taken possession of a few thousand dollars in that bank account, haven't you? And I also heard that you've already gone ahead and moved into the house. Is that also true? So, is abandoning the inheritance even an option anymore? Somehow, I don't think so. Huh? What do you mean? We can't abandon the inheritance anymore? Oh, I'm sorry. After all, I'm just a college dropout, and I have no idea about these things. You should probably look into it on your own or consult an attorney about it. This stuff is so complicated and I'm so uneducated. You witch! 
You knew all about this all along and said nothing to us. How petty and vindictive! Treating us like this, no matter how cold we may have been to you, is just beyond the pale. We're James's parents, not to mention we're your parents-in-law too. Does this mean nothing to you? Oh, really? Is that so? This outcome was inevitable in my opinion. I can't believe you didn't see it coming, to be honest. After all, you were always ridiculing my high school education and my single motherhood. Honestly, is there a person on earth who would actually want to help you after being treated so badly by you for so long? And he cancelled his life insurance. Did you know about that too? How are we supposed to live now? We're screwed! I have no idea. It sounds like you and Maverick need to think and talk things over. Wait, Chrissy. You know, you and I are actually in the same boat, so to speak. Hmm? How do you figure? Well, we just lost our beloved son, and you just lost your husband. We're both going through the same thing and feeling the same sorrow. So how about helping each other out a bit? James was always saying before that your salary is pretty good. And you also just said that your salary was enough to pay the mortgage, right? Don't let me into the same category as you. We're not the same. Not at all. I loved my husband with all my heart. But all you two care about is money. Okay, if you help us out now, we'll apologize, make amends, and give you the credit that you deserve and never got from us. We'll respect you and treat you better as our honored daughter-in-law. No, there's no need for any of that anymore. It's much too late. The love of my life is at peace with the angels now, and it's really ridiculous for you to be asking anything of me at this point. James is probably laughing his head off watching all of this from up there. Please don't say that. It's just cruel. Please come back and live in the house that you built. Then we can all live together. I mean, isn't it tough being all by yourself? Sure, it's tough being alone. But living with the two of you would be a thousand times tougher. Don't you feel any obligation or connection to us anymore? After all, didn't we help pay for some of your wedding expenses? Ha! <laughs> you said that you would help out, but in the end, we never got a dime from you. What? Really? Was that how it happened? I don't remember that. Okay, then I'll do all the household chores and take care of everything for you, Chrissy. How about that? No. I'm perfectly capable of doing all that stuff by myself, so no, thank you. And besides, I have somewhere to be, so you'll have to excuse me now. And just where is it that you have to be? Maybe you're going to visit James's grave? No, I have to be at the police station. Why do you have to go to the police station? Because you slapped me, remember? I need to go file a police report about it. It was assault, plain and simple. What? You're doing that now, after all this time has passed? Well, it's up to me when I decide to report it. Unfortunately for you, there's no statute of limitations. And it looks like a family member is willing to be a witness for me too, so... Wait just a minute. Chrissy, please. Please forgive us. No. I most certainly will not forgive you. I fully intend to repay you for the horrible way that you've always treated me. It's only fair, after all. After that, Serena begged me to drop the police report, but I sued her and Maverick instead and got a settlement. My in-laws avoided bankruptcy, but they had to sell their house and move back to their old place. They still owe a lot of money because of James's debt and the mortgage. They blame me for everything and have become outcasts among their relatives and neighbors. They thought they would profit from James's death, but it backfired on them. This is the best revenge for me. James told me that he couldn't leave any inheritance but I loved him anyway and I don't regret donating all the money. I wanted to help people who needed it. I have some savings from before we got married and James gave me many expensive gifts. He said they were for when I might need them, but I don't want to sell them. They are precious memories of him. I will keep them and live well so he can see from heaven that I am fine.